So the point is, can we ensure that all that interaction is excellent? The second goal, in regular words, we want to get kids jazzed up, really excited about STEM. And we want them to understand that they can explore those interests in a whole variety of settings, both formal and informal education. And that's biconditional. So if they experience good teaching and learning in all kinds of settings, they'll get jazzed up. Kids don't realize that those video games that they love so much, or all of the social networking that defines their lives, is grounded in STEM expertise. And that you really do need to know CAD and CAM if you're going to be a fashion designer. I mean, they don't have much of a sense of that. So we really want to break that down. And last of all, um, our corporate members, and maybe some of you, are sick and tired of starting over again. So we want to sustain commitment. We want to get on a trajectory. The only reason we would get off that trajectory is if data indicated to us that we needed a mid-course correction. We don't want every time there's a new governor, I'm glad the governor's not here now, but every time there's a new governor or a new elected official to sort of wipe the slate clean. Nothing happened before I got here. And now I'm really going to fix things. So we're really all about sustaining commitment. Well, what defines success? What will it look like? I would say that these three bullets talk about what will make change the equation successful or not. What does the business community do or should do in STEM education? Well, one is their incredible philanthropy. And you have evidence of that just by being here at this meeting today. We want to be sure that our members are investing their money in smarter, wiser ways. Our member companies together invest over half a billion dollars, B, billion dollars a year in STEM philanthropy. It's not paying teacher salaries, it's not paying the electric bill, it's not buying textbooks, it's all that extra stuff. And yet it really hasn't moved the needle very much. So among some of our member companies, I'm not saying of those present here today, there's a certain sense of dissatisfaction. We're not sure we're getting a return on our investment. We're not sure we're doing it right. When we were recruiting members, we were really saying and hearing from them, I, I need advice. I need help. I've been doing this for X years. Can you help me think about it in new ways? So that's one thing that will be successful if our members and, frankly, the whole rest of the world benefits from the philanthropy that the companies are doing. The second thing that we do well is advocate. So CEOs, who are really our official members, happen to be in the habit of getting phone calls answered, uh, especially the kinds of really big companies that make up change the equation. So we are really trying to help them speak as a chorus. There have been lots of CEOs who've been education CEOs who've been passionate about them. I listed some of them when I named the founding members that Obama turned to. But the point is we want to, first of all, mentor more CEOs in this process of caring and thinking about education, but really amplify their voice on leverage points. And where the corporate community is believable, and by the way, it's not believable on every subject. I don't think there are very many companies that you really want to ask, so what should 10th grade biology look like? I mean, they'll give you an answer, don't, don't worry about that, but I'm not sure that that's really their expertise. So we really want to be sure that we amplify their voice on things that they're believable. And the last thing is this accountability. At the release, President Obama said that Change the Equation pledged to the American people to be its conscience on STEM education. Now, I asked him to say that. It's true. Um, and I really meant it most sincerely. So what are we doing about that? Well, the first thing we're doing is cleaning our own house. That's the whole business about this philanthropy. We want to do better in what we're trying to do and the ways in which we support STEM education. And I've had people at settings like this say, well, who put you in charge? Which is a good question. And I, I don't see anybody knocking us out of the way. So there's a certain guts that we've taken by saying we really want to serve as the conscience. And we want to hold ourselves accountable. We want to hold ourselves responsible for 
advocating good policies, and making wise financial decisions. So in the first year, which we're in now, uh, what are we undertaking? Well, the first thing I had to understand was what is it that my companies were doing? And you notice I chose the word snapshot. A lot of people now are saying inventory, inventory. We have to know what everyone's doing. Well, I've given up the notion of inventory because the moment you ask a company what you're doing, 10 days later, there's a press release announcing some new initiative. But I at least had to get a feel for it, and that's why I was able to say to you, for example, they're much more in the formal education space, and that's where we're able to come up with the numbers of half a billion. You do see a lot of investment at the middle and high school level, a little more than at the elementary school level. And I'm talking age bracket, not just in school. But we do have a snapshot of many of our member companies. Tomorrow, I'm rushing back to DC tonight, we are unveiling our design principles for effective STEM philanthropy to our membership. So there's been a committee of 12 companies that have been working on it, and that's part of this, we need to invest more wisely. We have a set of design principles in pilot form. They'll be on the website. I'm sharing them with every, every organization I can think of. They're available to you. Um, what we want to do, by and large, is have programs understand what's likely to entice corporate money, corporate philanthropy. And it, they're quite predictable. I don't think there's going to be a single design principle that you'd say, where did they come up with that? One of them is evaluation. Set your goals and show that you're meeting them. The number of programs that have high quality evaluations is very discouraging. Very discouraging. I know why. There's never enough money. There's never enough time. All of those very legitimate reasons. But it's very hard for companies to invest in something, and frankly, it should be hard for us to promote something without knowing that what we're doing is working. And so we're coming out with those. They, they, depends what they say tomorrow, whether it'll be April 1st or April 10th, I don't know. But early in April, they'll be posted on our website. And I'm happy to get comments and feedback on them. The president at the launch also said that what Change the Equation wants to do is take a small number of effective programs and put them in new sites, in places where they haven't been before. So we picked 100. You know, everything when you pronounce it in Washington has some zeros on the end. I think we can't do anything without a zero, especially in the ones place. And it's going to be 100 new sites, and I'll talk a little bit more about how we're going to do that. That's been a very humbling lesson for me. Our companies also want a much broader database because our companies are very different. If they particularly want to reach a Hispanic audience and they want uh, middle school kids for whom high school graduation would be the first in their family and they want to focus on earth science, we want to have a searchable database that will put out some programs that have met the design principles. But most important is that the programs are scalable and they're replicable. So I've been in this business long enough that I know we've had some wonderful programs led by some really charismatic visionaries who've done incredible work. But we don't have this cloning thing down. And when that person retires or moves on, programs tend to fade. So the real question is, how can we build programs that have legs? State-by-state uh, -state vital signs is part of our advocacy, and I'll discuss that a little bit more. But most important, we want to use that bully pulpit, the, a really well-conceived communication strategy. 